Hey everybody, what's up you guys? I'm Aaron, here with my co-host Zach. What's up? You're listening to A to Z Podcast, episode 65. Today's guests are historian Sarah Bellion and aquatic biologist Allison Tarter. It's like they're trying to be too meta. We're gonna make them an offer they can't refuse. Much better. Yeah. Yeah. You can, you can, can I buy you a drink? You can yeah. just but, well, you well, I mean, he did pick out somebody we know. Well, you sidestep the question. That technology does no, not no. exist. If this is your first time listening, thanks for checking us out. A to Z is a Southeast Texas local podcast with new episodes out weekly on all major podcast platforms. Show notes can be found on a to z podcast.com, but you can also follow us on Facebook and Instagram where we post updates, clips, and extra content. And don't forget about those groups. We have the A to Z podcast group, and we also have A to Z movie night, the grouping, where you can catch up with us, catch some memes, catch some clips. Yeah. Uh, we've been doing a thing on A to Z movie night lately where we put uh, like a, a, a clip from the show, and they're pretty dang fun. Funny, yeah, so. they're pretty funny. So and check us out on those groups. We also do like uh, we'll put like a schedule up for the month on AZ Podcast Group, so you can look forward to what we're gonna have coming out. We got a schedule out now uh, with four episodes coming to you in the following weeks. Get hype! But today uh, was a, a real treat for us. It was awesome, dude. Yeah, uh, yeah dude. So it was a great one. So yeah. if you're a longtime listener of ours, then you know that we did this sort of thing over a year ago. Yeah. Right. What was it, episode two? Episode two, we had Sarah on, uh, but whenever she came in, she brought along Allison Tarter, who would go on to be, I think, episode 10 was another guest that we had back. She brought her along as a friend because she came into this creepy house while we were just getting started. Right, and we didn't have anything to show. We didn't have any Facebook page or anything at that point. And she gave us a shot and and brought Allison along, and then we ended up making such great friends with with both of them that we had both of them on this at the at different times. But yeah, so now we now we have them together. They came back. It was a total surprise. Yeah, and uh, it really it really kicked off for a great episode. Yeah, you know we we kind of started on a high note, mm-hmm. and it never went down. We had a few beers. I and- will say this is gonna this is more of a rambler than we usually do uh, because we get so excited talking about these topics and history and science that it's we're kind of rambling around a little bit. We try. We wanted to try and make it a little more concise and by the book, but that's just not going to happen whenever you get all of us in a room together. It's not going to happen with with us four. So <laughs> uh, hopefully you guys like that sort of thing. I know that we yeah. did. It was it was one of the more fun ones we've done lately. And you got you a know. lot of book recommendations in this. That's one true. Too. Yeah. So uh, if you like this, we want to hear from you. Send us an email at feedback at a to z podcast dot com. Leave some reviews and comments on social, and enjoy this episode with Sarah Bellion and Allison Tarter. Constantinople now it's Istanbul, now Constantinople, been a long time gone. Constantinople now it's church delight on a moonlit night. Every gal in Constantinople lives in Istanbul, now Constantinople, so if you've been there in Constantinople, she'll be waiting in Istanbul. Yeah, there's probably something there. Well, there is. Uh, the private sector has uh, the best form of it right now is the Weather Channel, believe it or not. Their augmented reality room. Have you seen it? Yeah. No, that's what yeah. I was going to say. I, I, I don't know if we've already started or not, but that's something I can yeah, We're definitely. recording, so. Okay. Yeah, we'll just jump, uh, we'll just we'll just jump, jump right in. No, no, no. That, yeah, that's cool. So, uh, so the thing with the augmented reality stuff that's really, really interesting is as our ability to capture motion without sensors uh, has improved, um, we can now use the world around us a lot more thoroughly Mm. to insert different content in it. So for instance, uh, there's a museum in Abilene called Frontier Texas, and they have uh, these um, holograms that talk to you. (laughs) So you walk in and sitting on a, a buffalo robe is Quanta Parker. And the hologram is actually the audio component of the museum exhibit, Mm. except it's a hologram of a person. That was sci-fi. That was literally sci-fi in 2000, whenever they made the movie uh, uh, Time Machine. And that was the curator of the museum, was like augmented. Yeah, like seven some years ago or eight years ago, they built that place. So it's actually not even that new. Yeah. Um, But the the thing about working in... uh, more entertainment than in museums. And this is where the line kind of blurs. Museums are always afraid of being seen as Disneyland Mm. because they're saying, well, we're actually trying to educate people. But the same technology that Disneyland is using to do like the Harry Potter experiences and stuff like that can be applied in museums as an educational tool. Absolutely, yeah. And it can really wow people. I mean, mean, it's... 
Well, I guess maybe they're kind of trying to say the same thing as like the people who get mad at churches when they have like the moving head beams and the big sound systems and stuff. Yeah. It's like a distraction from what they're trying to do, maybe. Well, I, and I can understand that rationale, but I, I'm really a big advocate for integrating the technology mm -hmm. in the museums yeah. because it changes your experience so thoroughly yeah. and it connects with people in a really different way. One of the first successful exhibits I did uh, as a curator was called Texas Justice. And I did this at the Scurry County Museum in Snyder. And when we started on the exhibit, my first thought was, you know what the problem is? Everybody wants to put their hands on things. Everybody wants to be immersed in something. And we're not doing that. We're putting objects in boxes with labels. Or velvet ropes. And or velvet like ropes, and you're not allowed to touch it, and you're not allowed to experience it. So when we, we, we did Texas Justice, one of the things we integrated into the exhibit, which was a lot of fun, was both a courtroom that you could sit down in, in the one area, and a jail cell. We had the uh, local j jail bring out their training bunks and doors and stuff so that people <laughs> could lock their family members up. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, it was still educational because we talked about the history of law enforcement in Texas from the Texas Rangers up towards the present. So they still learned things, but then they also got to uh, solve a crime scene. Mm. So one of my friends um, that I used to do a lot of martial arts with, who's a Texas Ranger, came in and set up a crime scene for us <laughs> so people could investigate it. They could look at the footprints. They could find the objects. They could take the fingerprints. And then they could lock people up. <laughs> and it was so much better than anything we'd done before. And that's really, I think, for me, was the point where I said, one, I'm very passionate about exhibit design in museums. And two, uh, let's play with all the toys. Yeah. Let's, I mean, let's find out can. what toys are out there and let's play with them. Uh, there's no reason that like Harry Potter world should be the only place that can utilize this really cool stuff that's like almost indistinguishable from magic. Yeah, yeah, it's it, it makes people want to learn more. You want to learn more when you're immersed. Absolutely, yeah. and and especially for kids, yeah. because they're ex they're used to being wowed. I mean, our culture so much has moved in the direction of like instantaneous gratification and everybody's got a device and everybody's hooked into their device and playing games and stuff. So younger kids who are digital natives who have never like ever put quarters in a payphone and never will, <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, in order to connect with those kids, the, the digital medium is, is kind of, necessary yeah. and the same thing for things like podcasts and streaming and stuff like that it is really a more effective way to communicate with the younger audience the museum that i'm going to uh is embarking on a massive renovation hmm. and i'm super excited about that because it's a completely new facility it's all going to be brand new and this is going to be an excellent opportunity to talk about how we interpret a really significant part of 20th century history, uh, really history of the world, mm. um, but through a new lens, which couldn't be more timely because I'll tell you, if your museum was built in 1994, it's dated today. It right, looks old right. already. Oh, yeah. So what is it? What is this museum? You're, you're so so everyone listening. You're moving to Hawaii. Yeah, you know, yeah. So I'm moving to Hawaii. That's the big news. Oh, bummer. Uh, it is a bummer because I feel like our area is gonna be missing out on 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 the, everything you provide. But uh, going past that, like, what is the museum you're moving to in in going to in Hawaii? Okay, so uh, Pearl Harbor Historic Sites consists of the Arizona Memorial, which everybody's familiar with, the Aviation Museum, the Battleship. And there is a World War II diesel submarine, the USS Bowfin, there. And the Bowfin uh, has, in conjunction with it, what is going to be the new uh, Pacific Fleet Submarine Museum that they broke ground on back in January. So it's brand new. And I think every museum professional kind of hopes someday they get to go somewhere and be there in the beginning. Yeah. It's very exciting. What's wait, what kind of vessel is this? It's a it's a World War II diesel submarine. It's actually a very oh, okay. decorated okay. submarine. Very cool. Um and that's, so, that, that's the museums? Well, yes, that's the museums. And they have a lot of other really interesting How uh, big is that? 
It's it's they're not that big. The old the old diesel subs. I don't have the exact statistic, but the old diesel subs are not that big. They're actually very tight quarters. But what's very interesting about them is, um, I don't uh, know if either of you guys know this, but submarines actually go. The idea of a submarine goes all the way back to the American they go, Revolution. They go way back. Yeah, they yeah. go way back. But they weren't effective. I don't know if you've heard of the Hunley. Mm -mm. Okay, so, no. so there's also submarine experiments during the Civil War because what people were encountering was as ships got more well armored mm -hmm. as they would proceed to through World War One and into World War II, uh, trying to sink them got harder and harder. Uh, yeah, like the ironclad, like the first exactly. one that freaked yeah. everybody out. So yeah, yeah so people, yeah, so well, the rise of ironclads pretty much decimated the effectiveness of wooden ships. And and they that was the end that was the death now in World War One. So, at the same time that this development is going on, uh, the development of submarines is running parallel to that as a way of not only getting rid of these increasingly armor-clad ships, but as a way of conducting secret operations. Mm -hmm. And so it ties in with espionage and sabotage yeah. and stuff like that, which gets really exciting. Uh, one thing that I love that I, I think is super cool and super interesting is uh, codes and code breaking. Oh, mm. for sure. Um, and so all of that is kind of tied in. It's like, so what would you do? You know, if we're talking about warfare here, what would you do if absolutely nobody knew where you were <laughs> you do anything you want and that so that's i mean that's the appeal of it and that's where it's really interesting and that's where uh throughout world war ii throughout world war one and throughout the cold war why submarine warfare is so interesting and there was there was <laughs> talking about that this is going to be related but a little off topic but <laughs> here in here in this area there was rumors of Nazi right. Nazi submarines. Not rumors. No, not oh, rumors. Oh, it's real. Are you yes, going to say it was real? Yes, real. Okay, so please clarify. Let's let's go back here. <laughs> <What? laughs> please clarify. We're going to go all the way back to World War One. Okay. So in World War One, oil production was nowhere near what it became for World War Two, but the United States was supplying fuel in large quantities before they were even past neutral status. Right. So one of the main targets of U-boats and later the Nazi submarines are ships that are carrying petroleum products. Mm -hmm. So all the ships that would be leaving here. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. So sinking American merchant ships carrying petroleum products in the Gulf of Mexico was absolutely a thing that was going on. That was real, 100%. Absolutely, 100% real. Actually, if you go to the Museum of the Gulf Coast and you check out my maritime exhibit that I put together for the museum that opened last uh, December, yeah. 2017, December, there's this entire section that's about ships that were sunk by submarines. <laughs> It is, but specifically Nazi submarines. Yes, specifically <laughs> Nazi submarines. The Nazi submarines were sinking American merchant ships, leaving Beaumont and Port Arthur. Wow. That's crazy. That was absolutely going on. Um, and in fact, uh, it was almost expected to the point that with certain cargoes, people would think that it might even just be a better idea to try to carry them yeah. some other way. Yeah. Like maybe like freight them to like Boston or something and then take them out there or something I'm like that. I'm talking about the Intercoastal Canal. Oh. Okay. I'm talking about all of the networks of canals we have in this area. A lot of the internal networks of canals in the United States were developed as a direct result of submarine warfare. Hmm. Because it was too risky to go out into the ocean. I thought it was for storms or something. I don't know. Both. Okay. Because this Definitely is the thing. It was too risky to go out in the ocean. You know, yeah, you could say storms and stuff like that. Hurricanes, dual purpose. safe harbor. Dual purpose. Yeah. But the quantity of, of ships that were sunk yeah. because they were carrying oil, steel, other necessary things, ammunition. Wartime mm -hmm. commodities. Yeah, yeah they yeah. realized it's like, well, man. it was just a big open shipping channel. Exactly. Like, there was no impeding anything so yeah. easy travel for them as well that's yeah. crazy but that's the thing so it's it's a, it's really important um that that's part of how that network got funded and constructed was it's like okay so if we're going to have a war and we're going to have to move commodities if we send them out into the gulf they're going to get sunk yeah blown yeah. up or taken 
So we need to move things internally. And this is before the highway system. So it's the same reason we have the highway system. That's exactly mm. it. The highway system came from World War One. No, this two. is World War II. World War, two. World, II, World War II. Yeah. So actually, you should really hear how uh, ridiculous it was prior to like World War One for people to get from place to place. Oh, I, uh -huh. See, this is this is where my history comes in. This is what I was taught in, in, in school was that uh, Dwight Eisenhower took a Trans-American uh, basically like tour yeah. in and his car and it took him like 69 days or something. He and he was like, Audubon. and he was like, <laughs> by gosh, darn it. You yeah. know what? I'm declaring right now we're going to have an interstate system. And that's what I thought it was. That it's is because his trip took way too long. That was not unique to him. Okay. So there's actually a really neat little account at the Museum of the Gulf Coast in the collection that is an account of traveling from Indiana or Illinois to Port Arthur in 1917. Mm. And you would not believe how many times these people got their car stuck, how many times it broke down. They were camping in the front yards of people's houses and farms. Uh, they were they couldn't huh. get across a lot of the rivers. But they were using <laughs> wagon train roads. Basically. Oh, yeah. Mules yeah. were pulling yeah. them out of mud. <laughs> wow. <Yeah. laughs> I mean, so driving from Illinois to Texas, when we think about it, it's like, okay, so if you're going to drive that today, it's going to take like you what? Like, hours like, like three days, like two or three days. Okay. It took them like a month. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was, and people were realizing that as automobiles improved, it's like, you know, we have a better car now. We can get somewhere with our car, sure. but our roads our suck roads so same. bad that we can't get anywhere. We probably had, our roads were probably not only so bad, they were probably worse than bad. Like when we, when we think of uh, uh, historical roads, like, like the British road, you know, like, uh, like well, Legionnaire Road with like, with the aggregates, the different size aggregates filled in, made really good roads. Here it was Roman, like probably like yeah. clay. Mm -hmm. Like everywhere in America was no, probably it, it, here. A lot of it is uh, it, it's shell middens from oh, okay. from uh, from the Native Americans here. Like, so they would eat they would eat the uh, little mollusks, which are like the I don't know, Atlantic Rangia clams. Yes. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. chunk them all into big piles. And so they I mean, there were roads. just like millions and millions of square meters of them so they scooped them all up but if you look you know a lot of the the road base here if you look it's like white yeah, those, little shells. White, those little white yeah shells. The, they, those they are actually crunched up archaeological old, sites yeah they crunched up old ar wait, archaeological wait. sites so the, wait do, so do what in the in the oysters as well yes well, that's where all of that came from so that's why so all sabine, the roads have kind of those yes, shells here yeah. Yeah, yeah sabine lake used to be <laughs> full of that i mean so my dad was telling me he could even remember as a kid all a lot of it had already been taken out but there were still it's like a Big beach piles of, and, of... Yeah. And out behind where I grew up, um, not really Bessie Heights, but kind of across Lamar in, in, in the Natchez Marsh, mm. uh, there were still some there until Hurricane Ike, but it just kind of washed yeah. them out. But they were, I mean, they were the size That's of this room, but they used to be like acres and acres. I mean, just high Acres up. of shells. So they have all these different reasons. Like, did they build them up like that so they would have a high, solid place in the marsh to hang out or, or So that what? used to be, so. they used to be just piles and piles of shells. Oh, oh yeah. yes. Oh, yeah. Called middens, yeah. Um, so the, the shell crazy. middens around Lake Sabine and the Natchez River, some of them go back, you know, 2,000 to 8,000 years. Wow. So people have been going to the same site seasonally yeah. for thousands of years eating the same thing eating the same thing they would go at the, when when the weather was so, permissive oh, it's clam season yeah go, <laughs> you go get a bunch of clams you eat as many as you can you when the water <laughs> when the tide goes out i mean i guess it's it like be calcium carbon. it doesn't break down right it's no like, yeah. calcium no, yeah, carbonate yeah, just the more acidic the water here gets the the more it'll start breaking down mm -hmm. but uh but yeah, yeah that's 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 totally uh what they did they so some, so a bunch of people came along saw these and was like by golly that would make a good road absolutely yeah, <laughs> yeah that's free free stuff right there they were like screw yeah. history i yeah. think this would which also Ooh. has not helped our erosion issues yeah <laughs> Just, because they took those yeah because <laughs> when you think about it i mean it was a big oh, yeah, natural absolutely. buffer did the same thing in the water that it did on the land so uh, instead of Every time a, a wave washed up, it would wash out a little bit of dirt. Now it would just hit the shell and be That's fine. That's crazy. So, yeah. Well, here's the thing about archaeology, and this is something that people don't often wrap their brains around. What we think of today as archaeology sees value in a lot of stuff that archaeology historically did not see value in. Okay. So, for instance, I don't think they even cared. Though. No, they didn't. They, yeah, that's what I'm yeah. saying. But the, but was that no wasn't unusual. So, for instance, uh, let's go. Let's. Take Pompeii as a perfect example. Uh -huh. So when excavations actually started at Pompeii, it was in the, I want to say 1500s. And all they were looking for at that time was gold, yeah. silver, mosaics, and that all that stuff is at the Vatican. 
Yeah, that's right, where it right, is right, today. Right. Really? Yeah. So, oh yeah. So they took whatever was intact out of the city. What they ignored was a lot of the stuff that today's archaeologists go gaga for, which is stuff like things they find to be preserved valuable. wood, yes. preserved rope, something with uh, writing on like it. How things were built, stuff There's with writing rope on that, it. That's been like encased and preserved. Yes, oh, actually. And all the trash. And the trash. All the people's day-to-day trash. That, and that's because... Which are basically what middens are. Yeah, right? that, <laughs> middens, are, middens are trash piles. <laughs> yeah. right. So for right. a 19th century archaeologist, a shell midden didn't mean anything. Huh. Because at that time, if you were an archaeologist, that's the that's the era of Indiana Jones archaeology. They're terrible archaeologists. Well, Indiana Jones is the worst time. archaeologist. Well, and at the same time, there were so many of them. Well, yeah, at that time, they weren't they weren't like oh my goodness, so really we had so we start we start with yes. valuables. They're look they're yeah. starting valuables, and the same thing is with with some of the people with shipwrecks is a big problem. Yeah. Is they're in there for the gold or whatever yeah. they can get, and they destroy and they, the the ship in in the process. That's been uh, there's actually a very famous guy that does shipwrecks that blasts the, the ships to get to the giant. treasure. Yeah, well, there's still an estimated, what, uh, $90 billion worth of shipwreck gold in, this, in their well, arches. But the, but the whole thing is, if your emphasis is what is worth the most money, yeah. history the, the is the The construction of the ship yeah. is yeah. a lot more valuable than, you know, sure. a handful sure. of... Look at, like, the, the yeah. Mary Rose or the Vasa, some of these ships that have actually been preserved intact. The Mary Rose tells us an incredible amount about life at that time yeah. because leather's preserved people's shoes are preserved uh arrow cases and some of the roman vessels that they found they can do chemical analysis of what was in the jars from pompeii oh no i'm talking about shipwrecks oh, no, shipwrecks. no the but shipwrecks pompeii the, too the big clay jars that they kept everything and yeah. they can they can check the cork and see if it was olive oil or wine or beer or so yeah oh. so if you don't because it's still sealed this, down at the bottom and there's it's anoxic so there's no decomposition really yeah, yeah. And, and a lot of them especially like what is it the the inland one with all the i don't know somewhere in in it's a Roman one. I can't uh, remember. Are we talking about the one that we were watching the video on the other day? Yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah. okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is what now. we do for fun. So yeah. the yeah. one where they found like the, the it was like a, a That's analog in the Mediterranean. computer. In the, oh, yeah. yeah. You're talking about oh, yeah. the gears yeah. and everything? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. That was really yeah. cool. That's, people That's still... not ancient aliens, is it? No, <laughs> no, 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 no. This was a, this it's was... real. Like it's... Yeah, no, but this is real. <laughs> this is why I hate, I hate, hate, hate ancient aliens. I'll tell you why I hate it. Ancient aliens, ancient Ancient archaeologists theorize. Yeah. <laughs> the problem. Just blame it on aliens or witches. Exactly. Or Bigfoot You're blaming or- <laughs> it on magic. Yeah. You're blaming it on magic when in reality, people the are so a lot much. Crazier. Yeah. People are so much smarter yeah. than you. You're giving them credit That's for. That's embarrassing. Mm-hmm. Our predecessors were brilliant. Our predecessors Absolutely. figured out we're, stuff. We're that, lazy. <laughs> yeah, we're lazy, and so we're just like witch hunters. Like, yeah. Ah, witch, burn it. Yeah. <laughs> well, so there's a level of achievement, especially that comes out of the ancient world, that we're not giving people credit for when you go, oh, they could never have done this. Aliens. No. no. <laughs> Geometry. They yeah. could have done it. Trigonometry, yeah. geometry. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's, and plenty yeah. of time. And plenty of time. <laughs> <laughs> time. And, so much time. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. I mean, and, so. And they were much more focused. I well, mean, yeah. So, well, would, yeah. so would you be. Yeah, you would so would be. I be. Absolutely. Yeah. Because yeah. we're not, we're and not you can, dissimilar. You can still get eaten by things. Yeah. Us, yeah. us modern humans are not dissimilar yet to well, them. They're the exact same people we yeah. are. And we're yeah. talking about things that were life and death. And that's with. Okay. So. Roman irrigation and Roman canals and stuff are brilliant. Roman roads they are brilliant. They still work. They still work. You can still there. drink water oh, yeah, yeah. From, a, there. from a little spout well, yeah. that's well, all over the once city. Once they remove the land. You, were, you said is. British roads. All the British yeah, roads are British Roman roads. roads. Almost all of them. All the, all the yeah. significant ones uh, are built on a Roman base. But Right, exactly. But yeah, they... They like appropriating and call it no, roads, yeah. but it was Roman. Yeah. Mexico yeah. built yeah. over yeah. like the Spanish too. So or yeah. our, the Spanish built over the, the Incan. The Incan roads. roads. Yes, yeah. that's true. Right. Oh, and, um, and yeah. Even the, well, the found in in Cusco especially, like the foundations of all the buildings are these stones. They didn't use any. They didn't use any. What is that? Uh, no mortar. mortar. No mortar. mortar. They, yeah. They're perfectly oh, fit. Where you can't yeah. put a piece of paper uh-huh. between them. Yeah. yeah. And, and then and then on top of them is Spanish colonial style houses. And yeah, every time it was an earthquake, this, and ch- the Spanish chunky, part would just yeah. fall off the top and then and it the would leave the bottom. Solid. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, you see the line. There's a clear line of like, oh, this part was built on top. I've, of yeah, I've been yeah. to Ecuador and yeah, it's, it's pretty incredible mm-hmm. um, because that's exactly it. It's like our predecessors weren't stupid. Don't. Don't discount what human ingenuity can yeah. come up with when you're talking about transportation, defense, hmm. water and food. 
these are things like, you know, it's like, okay, if we don't figure out how to move water to this area, we are going to die. Yeah. Yeah. So how do we do it? Yeah. You, you, get, you get people like thinking like that. Of course, they're going to solve the problem. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and actually, I think that the best way I can think of to compare it is uh, when we had hurricane hit here, mm-hmm. and everything's not working, and you don't have anything. What do you see people do? Well, you Intergy, see pe- yeah, well, Intergy teamed up with the city engineers and fixed the water system. But, but this is the thing. But in general, do what people, do people do? You see people helping each people other. People yeah, figure yeah. stuff out. They right, work they cooperatively yeah. because. Okay, now it's serious. Right. No, it wasn't. It was Exxon. Exxon helped. But well, Exxon has a lot of engineers. <laughs> yeah. No, but, not that. They, they are kind of dependent on the freshwater system in Beaumont because yeah, yes, yes, or else they their can't, shit will blow up. They're corros. Yes, exactly. Oh, so they use. They so pump they water they weren't it? actually doing that out of. Oh. It's not altruism. <laughs> no, no, no. It was mutually beneficial. That's a hell, yes. hell of gaslighting they did, though, man. But yeah, well, that's what they've always done. I mean, <laughs> that's what every company does. <laughs> but why not? Oh, I'm such a. I'm such a. Sheep. <laughs> I, I guess the whole point of it, though, is exactly that. It's that you are, you if you have the need, and the risk is real, mm. people will. I think they'll they'll continuously achieve. They'll continuously amaze you. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, when there's no real consequences and no real penalties, and you got listless people hit, sitting on their hands, going, "Oh, what am I supposed to do?" Yeah. yeah. When's the government going to feed me? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, people, then you have crazy mm-hmm. fuckers like Tesla or uh, or uh, Elon, <laughs> Elon Musk. Musk. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and yeah. Tesla. Yeah, not entirely dissimilar in some ways. Crazy. No, no, eccentric. but I, that's eccentric. Eccent- that's so, what you, that's yeah. how all the... when you have money, it's eccentric. It's you're eccentric <laughs> when you have money. You're crazy <laughs> when you're poor. Yeah, yeah. That's how all the times of industry have been, though. You know, you yeah. know history. You know how they've been. They're yeah. they're all super eccentric. Like there's that. a really good book called Grand Eccentrics, which is about inventors in Dayton, Ohio, which included okay, the yeah. National Cash Register Company and Just Dayton, Ohio? Dayton, Ohio. Dayton, Ohio was a popular it's a, place. Well this time. is why right the Wright brothers. Uh-huh. But this is the this is what's very interesting about this little city is that in this period of time that this book discusses, a lot of people were inventing stuff in this same area. Yeah. yeah. And the stuff that they were inventing and working on, including uh, factory processes, like I said, cash registers and calculations and adding machines, and the airplane is stuff that's dramatically going to change the world. Right, absolutely. Uh, but but it, that's exactly and it. all it. happened in the same place? It, a lot of it happened in the same place. It, it all, it all happened in the Rust Belt, just not very far away in Akron was the entire rubber industry of the whole world. And you know? yeah, well, yeah. that's but that's part of why all these people end up doing that. Yeah. Is because what happens when you've got some harebrained idea? You either get shot down by people, right. or you find someone else who's like, "I have crazy ideas too." Okay. And uh, so I'll see your crazy idea and raise you one. <laughs> I'll see your crazy idea and <laughs> sure. raise you one. Yeah. Exactly. Sure. There's a funny little story that I love that's about uh, a bus line that was proposed in 1908 in Snyder, Texas. This guy had this design for a chain-driven, self-propelled vehicle. A bus <laughs> fell out of a wagon and he was going to drive it back and forth from Sweetwater to Snyder and from Snyder to Big Spring. And he had it all planned out. And when he proposed this, he was told in a letter that he must have been kicked in the head by a mule if he thought that there would ever be a self-propelled vehicle operating on a public road faster than 25 miles an hour. What was the uh, what was the mode of like combustion? Was it steam or, or what? No, no, no. It was this was a, this is internal combustion. Oh, okay, engine. all right. So, all right. Uh, but it's a, it's like but a cha- it's, yeah, yeah, it was a, a chain driven okay. car. So sure. he puts this idea out. He gets shot down. Nobody will fund it. Everybody tells him he's crazy. So this is 1908. In 1911, someone has essentially this exact same idea, only three years later, and they found a company which we now know as Greyhound. Oh, <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> oh my God! But. This is the thing. This is yeah. so. So what happens? You're in this conservative part of, of of West Texas, and the preachers tell their congregations not to ride the bus because they're going to die. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And this guy ends up fading into obscurity. Wow. Yeah. You have the same exact idea within the same phase of technology mm-hmm. in a more progressive area. People latch onto it. They found a company that still exists today. And yeah. and that that happens a lot throughout scientific and 
Oh, yeah. And, and have all kinds of history. You've got to be somewhere people are going to listen to you. Well, what's yeah. the guy that did the Peapods with the... Mendel? Yeah. Genetics, yeah. Him... Yeah. Apparently, I read there's this book by Bill Bryson called A Short History of Nearly Everything, I think. I think that's the title. <laughs> yeah. And it, it's a lot of those kind of stories. And, and apparently, he turned in his paper, and apparently, somebody in Australia turned in the exact same finding, but it took so long to get to the people they were turning it into that he got Mendel went out. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. No, that's really, that's really common, especially in science, yeah. uh, especially with women in science. Yeah. I mean, so, you know, even now, but back in the day, when you think about DNA, you think Watson and Crick. You don't think Franklin. Right, like, right. So I don't know I mean, any of those names. Well, yeah, <laughs> but I mean, she was basically the one that kind of locked it down. Yeah. And they were, I don't remember everything about it. I feel bad now. I've actually Should been to more, the uh, pub where they hung out. <laughs> Have you really? Nice. So, so, so Watson and Crick hung out at a pub in Cambridge. <laughs> I, was yeah, she their grad student? Actually, or? I, I, don't, I don't remember exactly what her role was. But she was the one that did all the work. But yeah, but basically they hung out in a bar and they, and they talked took about... And they credit. And then she died. They DNA. DNA. And, they, and then she died before oh, they got the Nobel. I think that might be in the book. Too. That sounds it's familiar probably now. in the book. Wait a minute, you're telling, me that, you're telling me some dame had an idea? Oh, yeah, <laughs> Is that yeah. what you're telling me? That was one of them. And then the other one that's really good is... Who's the chick Wi-Fi. Oh, um, she was uh, Hedy Lamarr. Hedy Lamarr, that's right. Yeah. The actress. Yeah. Yeah. The actress. Yeah. Uh, she didn't invent Wi-Fi. She, okay. she, she did radio. Uh, she didn't invent Wi-Fi. She invented ro- the control. technology that Bluetooth is based on. Something like okay. that. Yeah. yeah. I don't so know. It's like wireless transmission. Basically. Wireless yeah. transmission. Yeah. Right. Like back in World War II, right? Now yeah. that actually uh, is a Tesla thing, by the way. What? Wireless, wireless transmission. Wireless power. Te- right. Tesla was one of the first people to actually go. I don't need a wire oh, to transmit self, this. Self-driving so, cars. And then or? since so since the advent of that from Tesla, the only the first time I've ever seen it come up was whenever Samsung brought out the, uh, the, the wireless charging pads. Yeah. That's oh, nice. the only thing I've ever seen it. Well, like on Tesla ever. proposed, rather than running lines, that you would be able to put these transmitters <laughs> right, right, absolutely. around and you could transmit the electrical signal from transmitter to transmitter mm-hmm. through the air rather than through a line, which at the time was like, oh, you're crazy. Well, at the time, it was, it was wizardry. It was oh, magic. Ma- yeah, yeah. yeah. Witchcraft, but, yeah. but that's... They should, I have, mean, they should have burned her at the stake. If, 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 <laughs> if, if, uh, if Tesla could see the day what we do with wireless signals, he'd be just like, I was right. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, totally. Tesla. That was. I mean, even the yeah. uh, the one of the most fascinating stories from like science history is the whole uh, the, the AC elephant. the AC DC competition. Yeah, yes. Yeah. And seeing yeah. the pictures of like New York with the DC lines, and it's just like oh, it's the ugliest thing huge ever. Huge lines, and they're just everywhere. Yeah. Well, it wasn't the lines. And he killed an elephant was, to prove <laughs> his point. It was. It was. It he was killed like, a lot of animals. Apparently, it was, it was dogs, the amplification. Cats. Yeah. The amplification yeah. boxes. Because the DC they had couldn't to put a power travel. station like every block. It, it couldn't travel more than five hundred feet. Yeah, um, yeah, and it was Dottie the elephant that got killed. I believe oh, he, he killed he killed a lot of animals. Yeah, he yeah. that was like a, a traveling yeah. show like, he did. I'll prove to you that DC is safer than than AC. I'll prove it right now. <laughs> <laughs> give me animal. Give me a, give me <laughs> sure. Give me your puppy. Give me the puppy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no one running that, around. That's, here. that's, a, that's a thing though. That's, that's like uh. that's how history history is written by the victorious like right. it is written by the people who made more headway but but now we're looking back at it and going wait a minute there's a lot of yeah, things that, like some gaps. there's a yeah. lot of things that people think and it's kind of hyperbole but people think that thomas edison was an inventor like he didn't invent shit <laughs> like he was yeah. literally just a good manager he was like had a bunch of people inventing things for him uh f- people think that ford invented the assembly line the assembly line was invented 15 years before ford in Central Europe with soda bottles, making glass, like glass bottles. You it, know? It's it, like, a lot of it boils down to, like I was saying about the guy with the bus. It's, yeah. it's where are you? Hmm. Are you in the right place at the right time? And can you market what you're doing? Yeah. Because there are plenty of people that have brilliant ideas that are really important and can really change the world. Can you imagine if they had And a lot of them don't get then? the time of day. <laughs> That, well, they don't. I mean, a lot yeah. a lot of people don't get the time of day, even when they're right. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and that's a and that's a thing. It's, there was also a lot of like crookery going on in Texas at that time, right? There's still a lot of crookery. Yeah, of crookery. <laughs> I, I was going to say, what exactly has changed? <laughs> yeah, a lot of crookery. A good old boy system. Good old boy system. Well, let's take a just let's take more a, people. We're going to take a quick little break, and uh, and regroup. Come back to you. <laughs> Hey, this is your favorite host, Aaron. Fuck you. 
And you're listening to A to Z Podcast. A to Z Podcast is funded in part by our patrons at Patreon. If you would like to support us, head on over to patreon.com forward slash A to Z BMT. All right, and this is our break portion where we're going to pimp some local events happening in your community, Southeast Texas. Uh, and this one is going to be, we're going to repeat the pimp we did on the last one. It's going to be uh, its going to be Saturday, March 2nd at the Art Studio. How do you say that, Aaron? You say Capsula Stellis Iter Inave. Which Have space capsule will travel. Absolutely. So it's going to be a... Uh, uh, Zach's gonna, yeah, Zach's going to read you the description, but more importantly, if you're enjoying this episode, it will be your last time to get to see Sarah and yes. ask her any questions you want. Well, it's actually interesting. I've been, I've been reading more on it as we uh, as the week has gone on, and Sarah is going to be... She's helping set it up. It's also run by uh, Bo Dumas-Neil, uh, Karen Dumas-Neil, Jason Miller, Matt, Matt Myers, two guys from Space Capsule. Those yeah. guys are pretty badass. Uh, but it's basically like a space-themed art showing yeah. so you can turn in your uh, your specimens I think it's probably already past time to turn anything in but they're gonna have live specimens uh, dead specimens which are like in jars and stuff and then also artistic representations of paintings mm-hmm. but they're also gonna have Sarah's brothers which we yeah. want to try to get them on they do they're, they're working, do like a VR they're, uh, exhibit they're creating a V they have a VR game company and they're gonna have a VR exhibit there which is really cool I wish I could be there I want to see it but this looks like it's gonna be a pretty fun time and I don't see a, I mean, I would guess maybe five bucks, but it might be free. I'm not too might sure. Be. It might be free, but go check that out, man. Go holler at Sarah. I mean, uh, what else you got to do? Yeah. You know? I mean, Allison, Allison will probably be there too. Like, just go, go talk to him. If you enjoyed this episode, this is your last chance to get to talk to Sarah before she's off to Hawaii. That's it. All right, let's get back to the episode. I did it like this. I did it like that. I did it with the wiffle ball back. So I'm on the run. The cop got my gun. And right about now it's time to some fun. Yeah. The king had run. Little tusky rolls. Oh, yeah. Took them to see my, my hair dressing. Little oh. hanging out. Hanging out. Well, while I got my hair cut, got some bows. Aw. So what do you want to talk about? Uh, well, hey, like, mm. I mean, you, you guys are, it's your show. I mean, mm. I'm, I'm happy to, we, we kind of, like, went all over the place on no, the last No, it was great. It was great. <laughs> it's just, it's really, it's just like thinking, okay, where can I, we don't where, get, can we, where can we, where can we get many. We don't get many of these episodes anymore. A lot of our episodes are like, Purpose focused in, okay. yeah. And this is okay, fun. yeah. This, so is, fun. this is fun, like I, fun. A little all over the place. Just, talk I about just, crazy stuff. Uh, I like, I like hearing, uh, I like hearing about uh, the history and science things. So, uh, well, I mean, yeah, anything so, off the top of so head? here's team history and team science. I, yeah. I think that's, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty yeah. accurate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, actually, that's we were talking about archaeology before, and that's pretty interesting because that's where history and science overlap. Absolutely. Yeah, because yeah. history and science are friends when it comes to archaeology because archaeology is one of the ways that we understand history. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but you had mentioned when we were on the break about uh, this like trade networks. Yeah. And that is one of like the things that I absolutely love. I was talking about um, how, how neat it is when you realize that people – thousands of years ago were far more sophisticated and far more interconnected than we really give them credit for. Mm. And every time they find another shipwreck in the uh, in the Mediterranean or in the Black Sea, mm-hmm. they're they're discovering that people were moving huge quantities of commodities much further distances than people thought. Well just a just the a coins co- in that town. Just you were a commodity about. though. Yeah. The idea of a commodity doesn't yeah. exist sure. outside of a trade network. Exactly. So, like, in the beginning when we were talking and I, I was talking, we were talking about cheese and eating cheese and not being able to eat cheese. And I said that the oldest archaeological site that was from a, a cheese farm was 7,000 years ago, right? Mm. That's outside of your base needs. There's no one that's going to make a cheese farm. I don't know. Just, cheese, cheese stays for a pretty long time. Yeah, but, in the yeah, ancient, but in the ancient world, so. like, if you're spending all your time processing cheese, well, like that, means, that means you're not hunting and gathering. Oh, that's right. So you're that specialized. Versus a civilization. Specialized. Specialized. Versus a, like, right. a, a so it means you have to trade. Basically. Like, yeah. I'm going to tell you what they did before they made cheese. <laughs> in the ancient world, the first thing they did to preserve stuff was they made booze. Booze. booze, yeah, yeah, booze. Yeah. It was a, yeah. The oldest the, recipe in the world is for beer. Exactly. Right. So yeah. beer. That's right. <laughs> uh, here we go. I was I was giving you guys books to read. Here's another really good one. It's called <laughs> A History of the World in Six Glasses. Okay. And it's about beer, wine, alcohol, 
tea, coffee, and soda. All these things. And how all these things, yeah. all these things, things yeah. have changed currents of world history. Sure. But beer is really interesting. Because well, another thing that's interesting about that, too, it's also how you can, with science, track when certain areas were occupied by humans. Mm. You can take a core sample at the bottom of a lake, like a crater lake or something like that. And by the time they get to um, caffeine, that's that's when you're around. You can use that as a marker really? for oh, when yeah. humans. So it'll be like, yeah. so be yeah. Yeah. like tea leaves. Yeah. 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 yeah, so pee. Like, you're basically, yeah. you, you don't. You don't metabolize everything that you ingest. Yeah. It comes out in yeah. your. Is that why my pee smells like peas, coffee? Whenever peas I have and a good poos. I mean, coffee. probably. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah, it can, it can have a lot to do with it. But yeah, so, so you. My you, kidneys are missing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so yeah, that's that's another way that that, that science links in with that. So that they can say, oh well, okay. So at the same time, you have caffeine and you have this kind of pollen so mm. that was this was a settlement yeah, yeah. Way, way before we That's can incredible. date a dairy yeah. farm we can date breweries in the middle east <laughs> yeah. um, in the middle east huh? oh yes That's oh, yeah, Mesopotamia. Yeah, in, in muslim Egypt. countries yeah. oh yeah writing oh, yeah. writing was only developed to keep track of booze actually of, you're of right <laughs> mathematics, <laughs> yeah. mathematics were invented I'm to gonna keep tell you, track yeah, of yeah, booze. tally marks here's your specific <laughs> example of that uh, one of the first characters that was recognized to translate and, and learn how to understand cuneiform, mm -hmm. so ancient Babylonian writing, the way that they were able to figure it out was they figured out what character stood for a beer jug. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's literally how they broke the code. So things just really don't ever change. No, 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 yeah, not at all. Just... And, they were, and they were using this for counting how much they were paying people and what they were paying them in it was counting work was yeah, yeah. beer beer <laughs> they're paying them beer they were literally paying uh, their labor no, in beer the the one thing that all that you, i guess everybody hears is uh, is the reason that people drink beers because the water wasn't is yeah uh, yeah cuz it, it is was, true it was risk it was less part risky. of it it's uh, part of it well it's like mm -hmm. if you go to mexico it's also you know if you, if you drink Tecate in a can. You're, yeah. yeah. But uh, it's safer yeah, I, than the water, right? Yeah. People, <laughs> knew, people knew that the they knew that the water would make That's you sick in a lot say. of places. But the other thing with beer also is uh what people often don't realize is how much of a um social control mechanism alcohol is. Mm, social control. So here we go. This is really interesting. Um, so the British Royal Navy was one of the last in the world to abolish the grog ration. They stopped giving people alcohol on ships in 1970. Like grog? That's what they yeah. Grog. Okay, so what grog 1970, is... 1970, that was like two weeks ago. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, so grog is essentially rum, water, and lime juice. The lime would prevent you from getting scurvy, but why do they mix it with water? So historically, people drank beer or cider low alcohol content right. all freaking day every day. They right. still do that in Arkansas. Well, <laughs> <laughs> they go, still go do that in Texas. Go no, no, the low alcohol content. <laughs> okay, all right, I went up just, there to visit some friends and their beer is I don't like know, two, three percent. points. Well, yeah, I, I'm something saying low like alcohol that. content. And they I do, mean they is, drink all day. Like yeah. I don't see how y'all aren't like fat as yeah. well, it's Arkansas so a lot of them. Anyway. anyway, this is where I'm going with this whole thing. <laughs> Uh, is, Shots fired. Yeah, no, no, it's accurate. It's accurate. I mean, I'm, but people did. Historically, they drank yeah. low alcohol content beverages all day, all day, every day, and they still did their jobs. And on ships, you were issued a certain amount of ration of alcohol, which originally was beer or cider, and you'd drink that all day, and you'd still be able to do your job. Yeah, you'd never get what drunk. What happened when distillation when became cheaper, <laughs> Yeah, because people have known how to distill stuff for, for thousands a very long of years. Time. Yeah. They, I mean, effectively distilling, though, is the challenge. Mm. So it's not that they didn't understand distillation. Because if you get it wrong, you die. Yeah, well, yeah. But, it blows to, up. but not only right. that, to mm. do it where it's, not only safe, mm -hmm. but is uh, cost effective. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So that required some more advances. So by the time they start making it more cost effective to produce hard liquor, they transfer that grog ration from being beer or cider that they're giving people a pint of rum. The problem with for them giving, to like cut down themselves, I they guess. gave they kept the measurement the same. Yeah, but instead of being but like the percentage of alcohol, the percentage like, of an alcohol right. skyrocketed. Wow. So instead of them wow. being like, "Here's your twenty four pack of grogs," they're like, yeah. "Here's your handle, bro." Like, 
be safe, be be conscientious. Anyway, but so of course no one does that. Mm. Yeah. So what happens is now everyone on these ships, especially are, not if it's free, I mean, are wasted. Yeah. So they're sick all the time. They're yeah. sick all the time. They're right. You know, they're hungover. Uh, they're seasick. Yeah. They're hungover. They're hungover. Yeah. Uh, it's hard being out there. And they're also fighting. <laughs> and they're and they're also not doing their jobs. Yeah. So there's a crisis throughout this, the what, maritime world. What kind of time period is this happening in? Like over a course of like five or six years? Or no, 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 no. This is okay. So we're talking we're about talking like decades of drunkenness. Yes, really. yes. <laughs> we are, we are talking about. In this instance, it we're takes talking a lot to about turn a drunk ship around. I know, okay. <laughs> we're talking about the mid to late 1800s, and it's yeah. very important okay. because this is actually what leads to prohibition. Mm. Mm. Okay. Oh, yeah. So prohibition doesn't come out of a vacuum. What starts the temperance movement, why they start talking about stopping people from drinking alcohol. Because it's messing up the economy. It, it is. It's screwing <laughs> up the economy. Everything's connected. Because merchant ships aren't and working. And the merchant yeah. shipping, the shipping yeah. is having problems. Wow. The Navy is having discipline problems. The Navy, especially in Texas. So it wasn't just a morality play. Oh, hell no. Uh-uh. Huh. Yeah. It was, it was a lot of... <sighs> All the posters you Follow saw. Follow the money. Yeah. Yeah. But all yeah, the all the posters you <laughs> all the posters you see are like the women who are like really upset at their husbands for never getting like yeah, out of the house because yeah, yeah, yeah. they're hungover all day. And it's mm. like, get your ass up, dude. Like go out. So well, there's yeah. a reason that women were co opted as a way to sell temperance. Mm-hmm. Well, because of the same reason that women were actually co opted, if you go back another century, to tell people that they should not drink coffee. So coffee houses, which is where the Enlightenment really gains a foothold in the 1700s, uh, were a male-only environment. So the Enlightenment was not the Christian. Oh, like up. like in Turkey and stuff. Oh no, I'm talking about like, humanism. No? I'm talking about the Enlightenment in Europe. Oh, so, okay. in so Europe. so 1600s okay. into the early 1700s. Coffee houses become a place where people talk about these humanist ideas. Still this is are. where we well, no, they are. <laughs> but this is the thing. So, like if you're talking about the French prior to the French Revolution, prior yeah, to the sure. American Revolution, people hang out in coffee houses and they talk about what what is correct government, what is the value of a human being? Are we all equal? This is where these ideas that build the foundation of the American idea mm. come from. They start in coffee houses. Well, and, they started, I mean, before that. Well, yeah, but but they but, they gain speed in coffee houses. Right. Yeah, These ideas are old ideas. They started but with the Greeks, right? Well, I mean, yeah, but yeah. but the well, direct, that's a revivalist movement. Up so there. you yeah, can yeah. you can okay. say that yeah. stuff was originally started by the Greeks, but then you're talking about what the te- what the connection is over two thousand years is a little less direct than you say. Okay, we now have a group of people who are not drunk all the time. <laughs> right. They're drinking a caffeinated beverage, which has the, the opposite of effect, yeah. and they're sitting around and talking. So they were viewed as hotbeds of sedition and bad ideas, and they were going to be trouble. And, of course, women did not go to coffee houses. So women actually, in France especially, rallied against coffee houses as places where their loser husbands would hang out and not, instead of working, which was no. totally accurate. Wow. It's weird for so, France. So, well, France I mean, I've, I've and seen, England. I've and, seen, like, philosophy majors that it, it yeah, checks no, out. That, that, no, still, that, still, that still holds so, true, right? But still holds it, true. It's absolutely true, but that was part of the problem. Is So so women the women were complaining about their husbands going to the coffee houses instead of going to work yeah. Yeah. Uh, and uh, both uh, not working and getting involved in bad or brilliant ideas depending on where you're standing. Yeah. Um, so it's like, I'm not going to pay my taxes this year. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. You're <laughs> totally right, Jeffro, or J- Jacques Law. Yeah, okay. Taxation is theft, bro. Yeah. No, but this is exactly That's what funny. happens. Literally before the French storming of the Bastille, yeah. there are a group of men in a coffee house and someone jumps up on a table and says, let's storm the Bastille. That is actually it what happened. It started from the coffee house, really. It was no, started in the coffee house. They're in there, they're like, have you heard about this crap in America, dude? Like, now, were there coffee houses, a piece BYOB, like some of them are now? Or? No, 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 no. no. I'm just so, so, but this is what's interesting about the difference between caffeine and alcohol yeah. in how people behave. So when everybody was drunk all the time, they're not doing crap. They're drinking caffeine all the time. Oh, my God, now they're motivated. They're going to start a revolution. And, and they do. And that's yeah. actually literally what they do. That's It's really good. It's There's a chapter on it in the book. I was, who wrote that? I, I'm forgetting the guy's name, but it's called mm-hmm. A History of the World in Six Glasses. Six Glasses. I always thought that was a very interesting list. thing. Um, whenever you talk to people that are like uh, AA, like Alcoholics Anonymous people, and all they do is they teach like abstinence from substances, yet there's coffee in every meeting. 
And I'm like going, well, well they used caffeine to all smoke is a back in the too, day too. You know? They were all anyway, like chain smokers. That's just a, that's well, yeah, no, and and that's and that's true. Maybe it, now they're chain vapors. I don't know. It's <laughs> what people know. do it, anymore. It, it, it's interesting though because we got jewels. <laughs> where we were on the shipping and stuff and yeah. the, and the alcohol, where we, where we started before we ended up on coffee is it's the exact same type of thing. So if people are a predictable level of drunk, hmm. they're relatively happy. And they do their jobs. Yeah. If they're too drunk, they're problematic, mm. and they don't do anything. They get nothing done. Yeah. And so you have to actually have a control of that. And if they're caffeinated, your government is in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> That's so crazy. That's so, so we gotta, we gotta, absolutely crazy to me. If they have well, too like, much caffeine, they overthrow that with the, the government. Like the thing with opium, right? Which <laughs> just to oh, like, yes. make everyone docile. And okay. Yeah. Oh, right, sure. Just so, go get drugged up and we'll do whatever we want. You, you know Japan history, right? Well, Japanese we're going to go history. China real quick here because okay. she mentioned opium. What was the this opium actually, wars? Okay. That was in China. That was China, that, okay. Yeah. The British that was Hong Kong. purposefully Ruined. introduced yeah. opium into the cities in China yeah. as a way of controlling And they said, no, we the won't, don't want this. And they're like, no. Yeah, they're like, <laughs> well, late. so the, well. Yeah, the Chinese government's like, oh, hell no, this is bad. Well, and What's also happening? tax it too, yeah. Well, yeah. they tax it and they're selling it. So the British are supplying the opium that right. everybody's now hooked on. Mm. And it's doing two things. They're both making money off of it and it's keeping people from being productive. Right, right. And it's also keeping them from being pissed off because they're just laying around in opium <laughs> down all day. That's true. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah. So this tactic, at any point that people think that a substance doesn't actually or can't actually completely control a current of history, yes, it can. Well, that was that was part of the trading thing too. Is is I think there was a, a level of sabotage in there as well because absolutely, uh, there, was, there was a lot That's of. That's where Japan comes in. There was. <laughs> uh, the controlling the, yeah, yeah, the, Japan's the people bad, that were on top in China at the time really were not all that. Um, excited about trading exclusively with with Britain and Britain, where they stood at the time, where they believed they were uh, God's empire. Like they, you know, they they, 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 they were they as looked down on they were on as the such that they required privileges and trading. In the United States, we called this manifest destiny. Absolutely. Mm. Uh, so uh, and so, then, so they like. They were yeah. like, we require privilege. We want trade, but we want exclusive trade with tea. We want exclusive trade with this, no Absolutely. one else. And they're like, uh, nah, go fuck yourself because we're China and we have exclusive. We don't need you. We don't need you. And then so they did that. And then also, bing, bang, boom. Now that's why. Uh, Hong Kong was British forever because yes. of the opium wars. You're absolutely yeah. correct. Um, so all of that, all that plays into it. Now, what's interesting, which I was actually mentioning when we were out there, is there's another case study of this same phenomenon, which actually involves the United States. What? They so, did bad stuff. We did. Oh bad things. yeah. Did bad? I, okay. No. Oh. You mean Texas it, does bad things? Was it too? when we drove? Te when we, Texas oh. does all kinds was of bad things. When we gave syphilis to African American males oh. during that time, or no? Nah, well, this or is the this Cuban is Cuban Missile well, Crisis. This is probably Tuskegee, before Tuskegee, Tuskegee, Tuskegee. Yeah, we're we're gonna we're gonna, sure. gonna stay in East Asia okay, for now. Um, yeah. So we're gonna talk about Japan. So Japan, way early on, was seeing how progressively more and more Western world interest yeah. was coming into China and leveraging control over China. So we're going all the way back to the, the 1600s. And Japan's like, ooh, this is kind of problematic. This is because, before Tom Cruise showed up. Oh, way before Tom Cruise. Okay. Don't even get me started on that. We'll get there eventually. <laughs> was there uh, Scientology then? <laughs> so this is where we start here. So like in the 1600s, all of these colonial powers are taking over the world. This is before the Dutch. No, this uh, is the Dutch are out there. The, the British are out there. The Spanish no, are out there. But I mean, this is before the Dutch Japanese trade agreement where it was yes. exclusively them. Yeah. Yes. So what happens is the Japanese are witnessing how the English, the French, the Spanish and the Dutch yeah. are treating the rest of the world. Right. And they're like, this is bad. This is like, they see it coming and they're like, man, you're not going to be in charge of yourselves anymore because what's happened to everyone else that these massive trade conglomerates have gotten involved with? Mm. They've been completely exploited. That's what's going to happen. So the Japanese also saw another threat coming in in the form of Christianity. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, because the Jesuits were first. The they Jesu came in before any of, yeah, absolutely. So here's the problem. In the traditional Japanese worldview, the emperor is a god. Right. So when the Jesuit missionaries come in and say the emperor is not in fact a god, he's a man, hmm. why do you have to listen to the emperor? 
So they were like, afraid about all this. that people of lower classes were going to revolt against the ruling class, which right. was absolutely correct. So what they did was they crucified them in mass. The Jesuits? Mm-hmm. To, and, and the people who'd converted to Christianity. There was yeah. mass crucifixions in the Japanese countryside. They, they did it a whole bunch to make their point yeah. that you were not allowed to do this. They shut off their country. They allowed only the Dutch to come in through Okinawa. That's and it. the they reason the was, in, huh? the, the reason they let the Dutch come in is the, ju- the Dutch agreed to what the other European colonial powers would not do. They would prostrate themselves in front of the emperor. They would get down on their hands and knees on the ground. They would... Uh, they would address the emperor in a Japanese fashion and agree to whatever was dictated to them. So when the British were like, Ugh, we don't need to do that, the Dutch were like, okay. <laughs> and so they were able to continue sure. trading with Japan. We'll take your money. Yeah. And, yeah. And exactly. your oh, well, we just got to kneel? It was, it right. was an incredibly yeah. perilous situation, though, because there was always people that really felt that that shouldn't even be permitted. Yeah. Because they saw them for what they were. Well, most most of the colonizing efforts, they were looking for money, but it was also the spread influence. And yeah, exactly. Right. So yeah. so really, a lot of the factions of the Japanese government looked at that and were like, "No, nah, that's not good." They, I mean, they 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 really yeah. letting they, the Dutch in. No, yeah, they did. They, they were not universally welcomed. Mm. There was a lot about their they presence saw through it. Yeah. that yeah. was yeah. that was problematic. Uh, so this continues for actually several hundred years. Until so only the Dutch traded with Japan for only the Dutch. exclusively. This is yeah, called the National crazy. Seclusion, uh, Sokoku. And, and that's, they, that's where a lot of the Japanese, uh, what do they call that? Um, where it's, uh, where they only believe that they are the greatest. Zionism? The, uh, Zionism. That's, that's, no, it's, 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 a, it's related, but th- now we're at the last samurai. Yeah. Because here we go. <laughs> Now, okay, this is this is Tom actually Cruise what, is running. <laughs> this is what actually happened though. So in eighteen fifty three, Commodore Matthew Perry, on behalf of the United States, is sent to forcibly open Japan to trading with the United States. Japan at this point is already pretty well aware that they're not going to be able to continue to seclude themselves from the world because between the sixteen hundreds and eighteen fifty three, Think about the Industrial Revolution that's right. starting and all of these massive, massive changes in technology. It's getting a little bit scary sure. out there if you're not keeping up. Yeah, there's steamboats. Uh, oh, so yeah, the yeah. internal combustion is beginning. Uh, there's it, it, It's crazy. So, in fact, when the American fleet... Um, you want one too? Yeah, hit me. Same. <laughs> Uh, when the American fleet shows up in Japan, there are these beautiful woodblock prints that are done that show these black ships yeah, belching right, smoke. Right. And then trains and sewing machines mm-hmm. and all these things that have been invented that Japan has been out of the mix no for a couple centuries. Yeah, they were playing. They played catch up in so like one decade. Yeah, in f- in about fifty years, they did more than most European powers did in a hundred. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, so it's really impressive. It's it's a it's incredible uh, from a technological standpoint. But they realize when the Americans come in that they're not going to take no for an answer, mm. and the Americans do exactly that. They forcibly open Japan to Western trade, and this creates a total crisis of what it meant to be Japanese. Right, yeah. right. There was a total culture war. Because, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's there, like, was, there was men in the streets in Western suits, like tailored Western suits. And, and the value go. became yeah. to be Western was to be modern. Right. And this is where people got really scared because if you want to be modern, you need to be Western. Well, you so, have to give up your identity. Yes. And that's where it became really psychologically damaging. There's a very famous uh, Japanese writer. His name is Yukio Mishima. And Mishima wrote a little bit later, but he wrote about that era of Japanese history. And Mishima famously uh, like got a bunch of his followers together and went to the government to try to get a train change back to traditional Japanese values and killed himself yeah. very dramatically. Wow. Um, I think it's crazy, though, the, 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 the kamikaze pilots still had a place to put their samurai their, sword. Yeah, their sword yes. in the back. It is and, amazing. Are you serious? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, they, the sword was their soul, dude. You can't fly without your families. soul. Like, yeah. It was their families. Like it was, it was everything. Yeah. It was their ancestors. That. It was. Have so, you? So yeah. have you guys? I have one thing to say after this, but uh, have you been to the aviation museum in Galveston? Of course, of course, you have. Probably right. I, I have, actually have, I have not. not. No. So there's an aviation museum on Galveston. I went at to least, one in. At least uh, it was. It was back in the went. like in the valley a long time ago. It was mostly World War II planes, but I think they moved. Up so this is up there by Moody Gardens, kind okay. of in that yeah. flat no, area no, of the no. island, uh, yeah. and it's an airplane hangar. And they do have like a lot of uh, they have a lot Zeros. of World War II era stuff cool. like that. But they actually have not just a zero, but they have a kamikaze no way jet, and it is 
Wow. It's fucking scary because all no, it is. I no, I idea they had one. No, yeah. this, is, this is what they are. They're basically yeah, a bomb just that's just hollowed out. And then they bomb then they strapped a cockpit over it. And yeah. like, that's it. It's It's, it's, it's like a glider strapped to a bomb. So they pulled them behind yeah. the other guys and just. It's a flying bomb. Just dropped them. This is one of the things I'm very excited about with Pearl Harbor. The museum that I'm I'm moving to, one of the things they have in the collection there is actually one of the few not exploded Japanese suicide torpedoes. Oh, so oh, wow. this like the one guy in yeah. there? The one yeah, guy? Yeah. Yeah. It's like, I don't get it. You don't, do you have to have a guy in there steering? I mean, yeah. well, but this yeah. is the thing. It's this better, is, it's better well, than the was... pigeon that's tapping the, the thing, you know? <laughs> It's, mm. <laughs> it's better controlled than the, the dolphins. Well, never could figure okay. The dolphins. So <laughs> today we can put a torpedo in your toilet, but at right, that right. time, yeah. targeting was not what it is yeah. now. It was no t- it and was if just you really wanted set it on something, its course, to it, bro. yeah, set it on its yeah. course. Well, and also it was—I mean, it was the most honorable thing they could do, right? Just dying. Uh, yeah, yeah. It, like like suicide bombers. Right. I mean, it's, yeah. it's, if you if you you're, died you're in the doing service this of for the your cause. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. But. Uh, so back to that, I want to ask you guys a question too. I don't know if you've heard about this, but we're we're basically getting to like colonialization of the East. Do you guys know about the modern economic colonialization that the East is doing in Africa? Oh, there's that's isn't, not isn't actually China buying a bunch of stuff in. A that's bunch not of, actually as new as people think it is. Well, it's been happening over the past like twenty years. Well, they're going I'm back t- to the Dutch. I mean, tell you, you know, they yeah. did the same thing to. But Africa. now, but now it's not. So now it's not European powers that are doing it. It's actually yeah. Eastern powers. Like China is the number one investor in the entire continent of Africa, and they're doing all these like super megalithic sort of uh, 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 projects. Like they're doing, like. They're doing like transcontinental highways. They're doing uh, oh, the shit. the biggest port that's going to exist in the entire world that's is right, going to be in Africa. That's China, and they're going to be exclusively Chinese. Like really? the same thing, that, no. the same thing that we as America have been doing since our inception with putting our our bases literally everywhere over the world. China's now doing that to Africa. That that book that I was talking about before, where the ch- the chapter on soda is about globalization, mm. and, that's and that's really probably, interesting. That's the last chapter because, I would take it right. Yeah. Because soda is a perfect example of exactly what you're talking about, how America went around the world yeah. and stamped their mark on it. Yeah. Because there's nothing there's nothing more American Pepsi than Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola. Yeah. It's ubiquitous. It's everywhere. everywhere. And it's a powerhouse with the, the amount of money that is involved. In yeah. soft drinks it's, it's is strange. insane. It is incredible. We, and you, you know, you, so was it for sugar cane? Is that what it was then? I mean, I don't know why were they. Well, going it was part of the, the cocaine, like, honestly. The, uh, the cocaine and the sugar. Well, it was all the cane. So, <laughs> so all the cane. How, all the how people <laughs> invented soda and what people have done with soda are kind of really two different things. But I know in South America that was a big thing. I mean, like Pepsi and Coca Cola were. Were they harvesting sugar cane? Is that what? Well, that, I don't the, know. The, uh, I, I don't remember know. Uh, Sam's, the Caribbean, Sam's sure. and Mary with the uh, with the the banana plantations. Is he would go down there and convince the government to to let him have all these tracts of lands, and I think it was a lot of sugar cane production oh, yeah. down there okay. at the time. And he would he would the government would let him take over other people's wow. sugar plantations and plant other things. So, so here sugar. here's your gotcha. global problem. It's like chocolate okay? and sugar. Yeah. And, so yeah. huge amounts of sugar are necessary. A lot of chemicals are necessary. Plastic bottles are being produced. All of these things need to be produced as cheaply as possible. So the American capital goes to places where they can't argue, buys huge tracts of sugar cane to produce. Yeah, but we make the plastic well, here. But that's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. But, and then we ship it somewhere else to be so, formed into something else, which th- makes no this sense. Is ex- no, but this is exactly all, this but is, this is what, what globalization do. is about. So every single step of the process has to be as cheap as possible. So mm. why do I have to pay so much for gas? I'm not the one taking plastic beads to Asia to make a plastic bottle that's going to get shipped back to America. Come on. <laughs> but if you paid people 30 bucks an hour to work at a factory and make plastic beads here, you'd be paying even more. Yeah. That's yeah. why they do it. Maybe, they do it with, but maybe I'd be getting paid more at the same time. <laughs> that's why they do it with chicken and other things, too. It's actually really scary what they do with meat. I've, no, yeah, that's disgusting. That, and yeah. if you want to talk about, like, fish Don't they, don't fish they like, raise them here and, and then shellfish. process them in China? Yes. Okay. I've, I've, How crazy no, is that? Don't ever eat farm-raised no. shrimp or tilapia especially farm tilapia. yeah I heard farm oh tilapia my has see, almost as but, much mercury as God, it's but, disgusting but, it's, not, it, it, it's antibiotics but what's it's, the alternative though uh, this, is, this is a real question yeah. so there's certain things that I eat a lot of salmon 
mm-hmm. and I sometimes I feel bad about it, uh, and then it it comes to me like I <laughs> so, would sometimes I feel bad. sometimes <laughs> I would like when I see farm raised salmon, it actually makes me feel better. I'm like, oh, no, so I'm, I'm not even wild caught salmon, you know. So what's yeah. like what's what else is there? Just eat you know? clams and moss. Either I either I either am gonna eat moss. like I'm either gonna like rape the earth and eat wild caught salmon, or I'm gonna eat like farm raised salmon and get mercury poisoning. Well, I mean, you could get mercury poisoning, poisoning from a uh, not farm raised salmon yeah, anyway. But, yeah. but, but, I mean, the uh, the thing is, it can be done. It's just when it's done at the lowest price available. Okay. I'm, okay. The practices are bad. Yeah, it's it's the same okay. thing. It's it's like a feedlot versus grass fed beef. I mean, mm. they're, they're not the same thing. Their passing grade is a lot lower. Exactly. Gotcha. And okay. when you talk about standards of, of, of raising them in America versus standards of raising them in, in some, you know, in Asia or somewhere. I, I heard they feed yeah. them dogs in Asia. <laughs> they feed them sewage in Asia. They, them, like, yeah. they, they yeah. literally feed their tilapia. It's just. Well, they are a trash fish. Yeah, they are a trash fish. fish. Yeah, yeah. They could they survive yeah. on garbage. On poo, basically. I don't even know what tilapia looks like. They're ugly. They're in the San Marcos River. They become naturalized because they're oh farming them is a big wait, thing here. Wait, they're really? naturalized in San Marcos yes. River right yeah, now? Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah. That's a problem. We should kill them all. <laughs> no, we I tried that when I I mean when I was living there, I would I you had this little like uh, have <laughs> harpoon. You, have you thought about it? Imp- <laughs> you just kill tilapia all <laughs> have you, yeah, tilapia have, and then the sucker fish, the armored catfish, like uh placostomids. Placostomids. They get like for your tank. I had I had one that was long those about six In the San Marcos River in the Comal. And they're naturalized there? Yes. Have that you ever is, thought yes. about me, getting with uh, have you ever thought about getting with the visit like the visitors bureau of San Marcos and trying to put out an ad? That makes San Marcos really attractive to Vietnamese people because <laughs> we can get those fish gone immediately. Really, not a bad idea. I'm just saying. <laughs> really, not a bad idea. I'm yeah. just saying. Yeah, yeah. I'm that, telling you, they. Yeah, that and then then people that want to, um, I don't know, recycle cans. That's the other thing oh, that, yeah, that yeah. you could just Absolutely. make an yeah. endless make amount an of money on in the San Marcos River because of all uh, the beer cans. I don't think we've talked to you. We haven't talked to you in a while. And what's uh, what's the scoop on the on the freshwater mollusks in Village Creek? You learn anything new, or um, or is it has it been? No, it's it's. I found uh, actually got a the only genetic marker for the Texas heel splitter. Splitter. It's Potamillus ampicanus. It's a uh, and it it was about this. It was just several millimeters long, which is kind of amazing. So that means that they're reproducing. So that's that's a good thing. It's one of the state threatened ones. Okay, that's endemic just to this so region. So you found a tiny little juvenile. Guy? Tiny little juvenile. Tiny little juvenile of it. Okay. Unfortunately, it was the one that I found was dead. But um, yeah. but that, that still means, means that it, they are yeah. reproducing in the area. So so that's good news. Yeah, and that's after the hurricane. So yeah. it's been really fresh too. Was yeah. this the t- doesn't didn't that didn't you hear that that was the the tiniest that had been found? Oh yeah, it's a small. <laughs> That's been found. So it's you, the you only broke genetic. A yeah. That's great. yeah. <laughs> I didn't find a new species, but I got you the did? validation. No, I didn't. No, you didn't. But no. I got validation for one. So yeah. it's the um, it's the it's the one of record. So it'll go into. Actually, I don't know where they're going to send it. Gin Bank, Are whatever you, that is. But, let me ask you this question yeah. because it's very topical and it's on a lot of people's brains. Are you as low key as excited as I am that they cancel Flow Fest? I'm in pretty, San Marcos, yeah, that. yeah, I'm pretty happy. I'm like, yeah. no, I'm, everybody's I'm, like, everybody's like, like bummed out. Like a great time. Everybody's like no. bummed out, and I'm like, hell no. yeah, thank. Oh no, my I, gosh, I had friends that lived off Skull Road, that that lived on the river off Skull Road, which is kind of the end of where all that goes. Um, yeah, and I mean, it was terrible. Not not only during. Um, festivals, but just on a regular day, we would just mm. sit out by the river see the beer and and around. no, we'd wait on drunken people to come by and listen for car wrecks coming to dr- pick up the drunken people. I mean, it's just they don't even try. So you get these like drunk college kids wandering up to you. I don't know where I am. I don't know where my car is. Oh, okay, or, sorry, bro. What do you want me okay. to do about oh. it? Like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> we, Where's we, your phone? Oh, I dropped it in the river. Okay, mm. good for we you. We did go out with my brothers. No, that was we fun. There, that and, was hilarious. And one of my brother's <laughs> friends has been in multiple motorcycle wrecks. This kid is really pushing his luck. Wow. So he's all wrapped up still from his most recent motorcycle wreck. And, and a little bit crazy. And and, yeah. and hopped up on 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 painkillers. Yeah. Yeah. And can't gone. get into like, his inner not... tube to go. But on he's the river. drinking. <laughs> And he's drinking, and he just—I mean, we were like, drinking. He's Lone like, I'm going to keep so. my—I'm going to keep my bandages dry. Takes yeah. two steps and is in the water. He just falls. No. Yeah, the creek. Uh, the every t- the one of I have I have two good memories of the sh- most shit face I've ever seen my mom. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
<laughs> one of them was at a wedding in Chicago, <laughs> and the other one was on 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 the on the the river. Uh, and we we I rem- the only thing you really remember from it, I was young. I was probably like thirteen. They made you know that you know those igloo containers. They like had the screw top and the oh, pop lid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And they, they have the little spout. Yeah, they yeah. they filled one of those up with with uh, vodka and orange juice. Oh god, that's oh, a terrible wow. idea. And that's then passed it all around. Terrible oh, idea. No. And terrible. she tried to stand on. I think she tried to stand on a tube and fell for sure. <laughs> and, she was on and, the and water. A state, troop, a state trooper had to get her out of her tube. <laughs> at the end. So see, that's the thing that's like that that worries me about the beer ban on these rivers. That they <laughs> There's try a to, beer ban. They in 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 uh, where were we? So people Brumples? drink more liquor like okay. that. Like exactly, we were just talking about. It's, exactly. It's, this goes into repeating. our story. But it's because of the containers, though, right? Uh, it yes. is, but it's more of a public hazard, I believe, than so, than just putting like if they just had like a floating garbage can every so often. Well, no, but they do that in the San idea. Marcos. Yeah. They actually have like some John boats. That's kind of good and idea. you and they give you a or they give you a like Encourage a like a crawfish though. bag. Yeah, you know yeah, those yeah. bags. Mm-hmm. They're, they're trying to keep the and then the, if you bring it full, you get a hot dog at the end. So they're oh, trying cool. to encourage that people hills. in ways that's that dope. actually like work. That. But the in, in, uh, on the other hand, in New Braunfels, <laughs> yeah, this is what we ran into. All right, yeah, so we're there with my younger brothers who are 12 years younger than me, the babies. Okay, <laughs> so Allison and I go out there, and we're going to, like, hang with my brothers and their friends, and we're like, oh, my God, you guys are such children <laughs> uh, because we're just older and wiser and did all that yeah. Yeah, yeah. 20 years ago. Years ago. <laughs> yeah. Like, anyway. Yeah. Um, yeah. Anyway. I barely remember that. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. 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 So, so yeah. anyway. No, I, I know uh, it happened. But. <laughs> so I'm kind of having a giggle about this because we find out we can't take beer on the river so we shotgun the entire thing. We, we had a case Star. of Lone Star. Yeah. Shotgun the whole case. Oh, um, that's a great and, start. And uh, so Allison and I are doing this and we're fine and my brother doesn't start We're not puking. literally like shotgunning it. Like they no, literally no, you, like. Your little brother started puking yeah. before. No, he was, he was shotgunning. Yeah. He was stabbing it with a key, and oh, then he's like, a real oh. shotgun. Yeah. 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 yeah, and he gave me one. He's like, "Oh, come on, do it." You I'm shotgunned like, one. And well, didn't I puke. did. I did one, but like yeah, he anyway. did like four. Well, and whatever. Then he, so, and then he was like, "You're oh, taking yes. forever, man." And then he just. <laughs> <laughs> That's got to be a big deal for the environment, though. So th- whenever I was excited that they like shotgunning beers, whenever I was excited that they canceled Float Fest, it wasn't even the trash. Really, I started thinking about it like yeah. environmentally. I was like. That's a lot of pee in the river. It's a lot of pee. It's a lot of pee in the river. Effect. Okay, so and throw and up like throw up is so acidic. acidic. Yeah, it, like, it's throw up and pee. Caustic. I mean, like because you already have the city of San Marcos effluent. It's treated effluent, but it's going sure, into but the river. Sure, runoff. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, yeah. that's already changing your oxygen load, like the, right. the 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 ability of the water to hold oxygen. So anyway, yeah, no, it's not just that, but there you have the the Texas wild rice. So if you go up to the headwaters and you look, and it looks like they call it mermaid hair or whatever. It's Really it's like cool. the really pretty yeah, green yeah. It stuff. It is really cool. I know what you're talking about. That gets torn up to shreds mm, yeah. during those kind of and things. Holds a lot of, and that's I'm the only place. That catches sediment it's and an stuff en- and it's an endemic, and that's yeah. the only place that it lives, too. And yeah, exactly. So it's the only thing up there that really holds the sediment down. Mm. And it's a cool and it native destroyed. plant. And right. it's beautiful to look at. And then when it gets destroyed, it gets replaced by like water lettuce and all these other like, oh, uh, uh, hydrilla. Itchy, mm. nasty, non-native yeah, plants yeah. that you don't want there. So well, yeah. my my advisor, um, well, he's, he's my committee member, member now. But anyway, his one of his big projects is like reestablishing wild rice in the headwaters. And it's actually like, it looks really good now. Yeah. I mean, just even in the three or four years that I've been checking in on it, it's, yeah. it's, it's so, pretty impressive. I guess this is the thing. So we've actually gone and done the party on the river like many people have done sure so i we can see like from having done it like where the problems actually are coming about yeah like you said you can see and i've also worked in both those rivers yeah. so like the como you've done a lot the, of studies in yeah, rivers, yeah yeah all the all the little rivers in in Cent- well actually all over the state but you especially them and near the university in them. You, you know you, yes you, yeah. you, a lifelong beer drinker time. in them uh you, you want people to be able to study. enjoy it no? too, though. I mean, yeah, that's absolutely. The thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, um, and and you can't. That's that's another thing. Conservation biology. It's how do you get people to care about something if it's just a nature preserve that's no one no one's allowed into. Mm. I mean, you have to be able to have an interaction, just like yeah. you were talking about with museums. You need, yeah. but it's, you need, it's, yeah. It's just having a respect for it. And and us, we grew up on Village Creek, which is a, yeah. a body of water you're super familiar with. I've gotten, I've almost gotten in so many fights because I tell people to pick their trash up. Oh yeah, I've yeah, seen I people, I've seen that. people canoeing, and they've actually thrown a beer, a crush up beer can out. I'm like, hey, 
Don't do you that. Better, like, yeah. pick so, it up. Yeah. I'm being serious. And they wouldn't have thrown in their boats, and they, like, came up on the beach. And we've almost, I've almost fought, like, so many people. <laughs> I've done that to people in I'm parking like, lots when serious, they've just, like, yeah. thrown garbage out. Well, you know, like, somebody like... gets out. So I just pick it. At the last time, it was, like, this guy threw his garbage out. So I just picked it up and threw it in the bed of his pickup truck. Was, like, yeah. really? You're going to, like, yeah. no. Come yeah. on. It's like Don't it's, be a garbage it's, bag. It's how, do we, how do we teach people the impermanence of these things? You know, and, like. Well, people just think like, if you throw it in the water, it's gone for good. Well, but yeah. also, yeah, but yeah. also, you know, I man, the, hey, the river goes to the ocean. <laughs> it's like, yeah, but when yeah. it's, whenever they're, whenever yeah. they're old, don't even you know? get started on what's in the ocean. And the That's ocean, horrible. And the ocean's a, it's, it's a vastness. It's like, oh. it's like the climate, man. It's just, you, the, man, just so it's, 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 no, it's, it's, it's the biggest thing it's on a the big planet. Old sponge. It's, it's never the, the whole is. planet's just covered in water. What hell? Oh my god, that's so bad. So, no. so real quick, I want to I want to I want to ask you guys something too <laughs> that I never actually really uh, thought about. But since you guys are such great friends, I thought about something that I don't know if you ever have. You might have, but have you ever thought about getting together and really thinking about uh, the indigenous tribe that used to use these waterways, the Atacapaws and stuff like that? Have y'all talked about that in depth? The Atacapans? And then the Atacapaws, okay. wasn't that the, the people that used to uh, live here? Okay, so I, I know a little bit about that. This is the problem. Nobody really knows that much. And I yeah. part some of that. Is what it's I've almost like told. cryptid, you know, because I, I grew up in the textbooks I read in seventh yeah. grade. Where they, okay. they said the they said Atacapaws. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so there are a, a number of... Uh, tribes that live in this area, a lot of them are what are referred to as like a Caddo-speaking language group, yeah. which is how a lot of Native American tribes are kind of broken down. Like Mudhead okay. people? Well, yeah, they're, they're, they're broken down is into language like, groups because... Like language families? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Okay. So they're like, they're, they're a lot of them are Caddo-related tribes uh, because contact with the Spanish was really, really early here. Mm-hmm. With Cabeza de Vaca, um, this is one of those areas where people got exposed, especially figure New Orleans too with the French. Yeah, because we have early European contact here, people get exposed to diseases really early on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the the local inhabitants are pretty much wiped out yeah. Yeah. in the 1700s. Well, everything that I've read from like the attack of that were supposedly here because. I was really interested in it. They, they talked about they had, like, dug out canoes, and yeah. they were on the Natchez. They were on Sabine. Sure, yeah. They were on this They used too. every part of but, the alligator car. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. No. So, uh, but, uh, they're bison <laughs> of Southeast Texas. <laughs> they did, though. No, I mean, that, yeah, that was and, a big deal. Every, and they haunted alligators, too. And right. they even used the, like, later on, the settlers used the... Um, Hide from the alligator gar, which basically it's just the scales yeah, to cover like their plows big, because it was so strong. It's very strong. Yeah, yeah. Wow. But when I when I read about them and stuff, I I don't know if it's misinformation or what, and that's why I was asking you guys since y'all are like so poised to know these things. But I read they were like cannibals. Yeah, okay. uh, I read, Can- I've heard know. that too. I don't know. Okay, yeah, here's just... the thing on the cannibalism. <laughs> uh, Yes, actually, legitimately true. Oh, cool. But, they were pierced, tattooed, and cannibals, right? But, that's, that's but not yeah. exactly <laughs> the way that people tell it. So, like most things in history, there is truth in there, but then it gets taken. Right, you know? right, right. Yeah. Okay, so it's really important to recognize with a lot of early explorers that what people did to justify coming in and wholesale taking a place over or oh Spaniards killing yeah, yeah, yeah. not just Spaniards, Spaniards were good at that just though. not just, not no, just no, Spaniards yeah. also the French me. Inquisition I mean just you know. in general if you're gonna go into an area and kill everybody yeah if you you're have, if, you if you're a, if you're a you Spaniard in the 1550s yeah. it is a much easier sell when that person is a, a cannibal, cannibal. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Or is in some way savage. so savage they cannot be civilized. Sure. Right. Yeah. So if oh, you know, like, it'd be a waste of time. Like, like, what are we gonna do? We, so hey, the, just, the other thing I heard was that kill him. I don't know. They you know, use they did use skulls as bowls, but there yeah. are no rocks here. So I mean, that, right, right. You know, there are no rocks. Hey, well, you know, what are you gonna use? So, so here's the thing on the camera. Grandpa's wasn't. skull makes a good cereal bowl. <laughs> <laughs> I got to eat my alligator yeah, Cheerios. Was a big hit. <laughs> alligator Cheerios. Anyway, uh, they there were groups in the area that practiced cannibalism. They were not all the groups in the area. They were the yeah. Christian groups, weren't they? No, 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 no. But the, the, um, they were the Spaniards. <laughs> the Spanish showed up, and it's very hard to tell 
who exactly they were interacting with because the names that we now refer to people by are not the names of the Spanish we're using. And it's actually worth noting that this is not unique to Southeast Texas, but in fact, most of the names that we use for Native American tribes are not actually the names that those right, tribes right. call themselves. Right, well, the names we And get, yeah. a lot of them have to do with what their neighbors called them. We learned that from uh, Gonzalo today. Yeah, for sure. anyway, the Aztecs weren't sure. called the Aztecs; they were called well. Uh, the so what what happens is uh, when a person is exploring an area that that no one of their nationality has been in before, for instance. Um, so who are those people over there? Oh, those are the such and such. So what does that translate as? Oh, those are the guys with the giant heads that we hate. You know, <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. that's basically it. Right. Um, and and that's which what is, the attack balls were. But they I were mean, for instance, and stuff. Yeah. tall and the yeah. the Sioux. The it's Sioux. like it's like it's like the the creation of the word for barbarian. Exactly. So the Sioux. Because they the, talk like bar 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 bar. The, the Sioux did, did not historically call themselves. Sue. They were the yeah. Lakota, right? Well, and the uh, and the Navajo did. The, you know, the, if they call themselves, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna pronounce this wrong, but it's Diné. Yeah, there's different names that they. Then they just call themselves human beings. Yeah, they, the and, and actually they call themselves people. That's yeah. what yeah, they call yeah, themselves. Yeah. They now their neighbors are, you know. Uh, that person over there who does bad things with goats or whatever. <laughs> right, right. Uh, you know. <laughs> right, right, right. No, but no, that's like New Zealand. I, that's <laughs> legit, though. That's actually what some of these translate as. If you actually Google it, you're going to find out that some of the names that Native American tribes referred to their neighbors with yeah. are just nasty. Really yeah. nasty. Um, yeah. Well, so so you think when the Europeans arrive, in this case, oh, big head. <laughs> the Spanish that's and the, the French. Big over there. They're yeah, they're there's dealing a, with these a, people. There's a river who in New Zealand called the Tutakari River, which sounds like a really cool name. Cool. Oh, Tutakari. Yeah. It literally in Maori means dog shit river. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> but that's exactly it. So so this is all part well, that's, of the that's, equation. That's, that's cool. You're asking, you know, if there, if there are cannibals. I said, so, yeah, yeah, there was cannibals, yeah. but this is the thing. Even if there weren't cannibals, somebody would have said there were cannibals. Right. Yeah. I understand. Um, cannibalism was practiced more Along the lines of a ritualistic thing, mm. it was a yeah, ceremonial way of, of yeah. getting someone's power, mm. which is actually not some, unique to North America. Nah, that's some yeah. EDM mean shit. Um, and it wasn't like they were just killing and eating everybody. Right. But boy, if you tell your 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 countrymen that they're killing and eating everybody, it's a lot easier to justify killing them. Oh, right. we need that to take sense. care of that. Yeah. yeah. That makes sense. Well, Savages. But well, yes, there is, evi- there is evidence that some of the tribes that lived in this area practiced a form of ritualistic cannibalism. However, However, not all of them. Yeah. Well, oh, that's cool. That answers my question. That was I think, really sweet. Uh, I think we're 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 gonna wrap it up there. We're gonna have to. <laughs> we're okay. gonna end it on cannibalism. <laughs> that's a great place to end things. Okay, that's a great place to end things. There's <laughs> there's there's a tribe in uh, Africa who you could put it on the cannibal spectrum, but when someone dies funerally, they ritualistically they will cremate the person who died. They will put the ashes into a grog, ferment it, and then uh, in a big party, like, yeah. they will drink it. And you could call that cannibalism. Willie really Nelson, roll me up and smoke me when I die. It, there you it, go. It, yeah. Incidentally, yeah, that's um, what we're gonna play on the way on the way out. Yeah, <laughs> we're, we're, I, I, I know. I know. We I know. We gotta <laughs> call it a night, it's but uh, I'll throw this one out there. Um, here's the science and the history side by side. It is not actually a good idea to eat people. Yeah, we're pretty uh, gross, from right? a no, from a yeah. science no. standpoint, it's it's pretty bad. It, that's like how mal ca- med cow, mal th- cow, that, mad cow, mad cow, cow. That's how brain. Cow. That's how brain prions. Yeah. It, 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 it actually when you brains. feed an organism to an, uh, to the same yeah. organism, bad things it, happen. It, 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 yeah, it is it is how you get certain kinds of brain yeah. parasites. Oh. So don't don't eat people. <laughs> don't, don't eat yeah don't, don't eat people don't eat brains unless you cook them really really well and, and actually don't here, eat monkeys uh, either because they're close no, enough to people yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well uh thanks thanks guys i'm so i'm so happy that you brought allison sarah and uh and, yeah, we no problem. Did, and, and i'm glad i mean y'all y'all were some of the first people that ever Absolutely, came and yeah. helped us do yeah. this crazy thing well, well keep well, doing it well, well you were you were you were the guys, first the studios and upgrades you were the great. first yeah, you were the first woman that we ever invited on yeah. and you are actually indirectly the reason why we got this studio because when we invited you we realized we were like you know we're inviting a woman to your house <laughs> she doesn't she doesn't yeah. know us from adam yeah. like it, yeah, seemed, it yeah. seemed weird and when well, we were talking that's about that's why it, she brought me along the first that's why time she, she was like i, I, know, I don't so and so no, you know but... and, and we weren't even we weren't even we didn't even like uh we didn't even have anything published yet so we're like yeah. is so we knew eventually we'd have to yeah. get a studio so we'd have a business address. and you Well, know, so. way to reach out to 50% of the planet. <laughs> <You> know, <laughs> so, so thank you for coming on yeah, again. No, that's thank awesome. you for coming on the first time. And uh, 
Me and Zach, we just hope you have a, a great time. Yeah, we're gonna miss you. We really, we really. Will. <laughs> this was yeah. fun, guys. Do you yeah. have a Do you have a history person that you're gonna throw us to, to fill your uh, spot? Actually, I was gonna suggest um, that uh, you kind of pick the brains of the County Historical Commission. Okay. There are quite a few people on there who could be really interesting. Um, and uh, we'd love to talk your ear off about all kinds of things. You gotta give us a recommendation. Well, one of the ones you should talk to is Bruce Hamilton. I'll tell you why. If you ever want to talk about crime, vice, and government corruption and betting booze and brothel stuff yes, again, that's, that's, Bruce that's is your man exactly because Bruce so. actually was very well acquainted with Rita Ainsworth's daughter. Oh, oh yes. So, so he's got some, some Yeah, yeah. He can tell you a lot about about that era. Okay, well, I'm going to mark that down and get a hold of it. I can get you his info. Awesome. All right. All thank right. you. Thank you all so much. We'll see you all later. And thanks thank you. for listening. All right, big thanks to Sarah and Allison. Thank you guys for coming on. Absolutely. Uh, we need to have Allison back for another one, too. For sure, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. I mean, you guys started this like with us a year ago. You put some faith in us and, and come back, and we had a great time. So thank you guys both. A uh, special shout-out to our patrons, Jordan, Lance, Brian, Doug, Michael, and Ben McClellan. Ben, you sent like a really sweet message the other day about how you think we're doing a great thing for the community, and we really need to hear things like that. <laughs> sometimes but uh especially for, zach yeah th thanks for helping us out and uh, keep the studio running and if you're interested in becoming a patron head over to patreon.com forward slash a to z b m t and uh our next episode will feature gonzalo alvarez he's the creator of the borders video game which was an installation and also the illustrator of the legend of polio man a mexican folklore adventure graphic novel and uh that's the end of this episode well, i guess we'll see you next week <laughs>